and I'm here with Nick. That's right. Nick, I'm so happy that you're here. Like, what is your experience here at Dev Nexus? This is actually my second Dev Nexus. Um, I went once. So I work at Google. I'm a product manager, and I went to one. I think right before COVID. I want to say maybe that was 2018, um, and it was great. And this is my first time back since. I didn't make it last year because of you know all the Everybody things. Everybody wants to steal like. So yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But no, this has been great. Uh, traffic's been good at the booth. Lots, of, lots of great questions. Lots of good people attending. Meeting some new friends. Thank you for that. Yeah. So we actually were discussing a little bit about what should we be talking about here. Uh, the term platform came to be a lot. Like you were telling me that you help uh, your customers build platforms. So tell me about it. Like, yeah. How do you help them? What are the challenges? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, platform engineering is kind of a loaded term right now. Yes, and exactly. So if you want to describe what you see, what, yeah. what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, I think that it, what it, what's happening is that there's a sort of maturity that's being hit in the industry right now mm -hmm. with cloud and with cloud native and containers and all these terms. Like we have customers that are starting to um, move past just a small business unit that's running and shipping its own code on Kubernetes, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, an organization of many business units shipping code to Kubernetes or shipping code to a platform. And they want to do it the same way, with right. the same standards. Right. And so like moving fast is now, I think, starting to take, it's not that moving fast is a bad idea. It's a great idea. But I think that there's uh, economies of scale and um, shared learnings that you can have when you build a collective platform that then each business unit can take advantage of. And you can also be a lot more efficient on your usage of engineers because you're, you know, you're building patterns and you're sharing this sort of platform that improves dev experience, right? Yes, when you are using proven ways, standards, or yeah. sh sharing the knowledge, you make the path less steep. Correct. And suddenly, yeah because other people are using it. You're distributing this knowledge, right. and people can help themselves, like, like yeah. help themselves, really. Right, self-service is the name of the game, right? Yes. And I think that, I think that a platform allows you to do that. Um, like Historically, why did DevOps, DevOps come about? It came about because um, there was this breakdown. I'm a developer, I'm gonna throw my code Silos. over the wall. Right. Like, I don't know you. <coughs> right. And so a lot of people are kind of fearful of the same thing that might happen in platform engineering. Because technically I have this abstraction and I'm working to deliver a service to you, my customer, developer, data scientist, whatever. Consumer. Consumer. My consumers. Yeah. Um, and you might think that that would encourage them to just throw it over the wall because they don't have to uh, deal with it anymore. But I think one of the most important things with platform engineering is making sure you're serving back telemetry, observability, um, signals to the um, developer or to the consumer so that they can get a fast response and know whether or not that thing that they just pushed is working correctly. And sort of, it you know, keeps them responsible and engaged with it beyond just throwing it over the fence. And the insights that are also coming with observability. Mm -hmm. Because in the past, mm -hmm. we had monitoring. Sure. And it was like, are you still alive? Yay, I'm still alive. But now it's like, are you alive and thriving? What is making you thrive? What is preventing you from thriving? <laughs> Why did it actually happen? Because first of all, things doesn't happen in isolation. Fair. So yeah. we need to know the environment. We need mm -hmm. to, to see that in the kindergarten, all the kids are collaborating, talking, and if there is conflict, we know it as mm -hmm. fast as possible. Yeah, no, that's, that's all accurate. And I, I think the, the true benefit here, though, is that as you're approaching building platform engineering, you just have to make sure that you consider your um, user stories. And your user stories are not just shipping code, it's observing it, um, staying up to date with it. And then also, the other, I think, I think one of the other difficulties with, with this over the, this, this concept that you're no longer gonna have developers responsible for building and maintaining things aside from their code, is that they're not gonna be able to contribute. But we know that's not true, right? Because we're using, we're probably using some uh, source control like Git, and we're encouraging anybody who has time to contribute, right? Because we're gonna work through a closed open source type system. You can work through merge requests and pull requests. And so it's no longer this gate mm -hmm. that prevents me, the developer of service X, from saying, oh, hey, I want this new pattern. Um, I'm gonna have to wait three months for the platform team to deliver it. No, I can contribute and help 
and, and give back to the platform. And I think that's super important. Well, it actually depends on the tool, but I agree with you. The level of transparency that yeah. we are reaching right now for developers to understand what the entire process is, yeah. is a change from the past. Because in the past, we had this build master and then release master. And, and, and as a developer, you, you kind of avoided those, those concepts like, I'm not going to touch the POM XML or, or whatever, because there was a person that should be the old master of that, or, right. or the, the chief of mm -hmm. that, the head of that. And suddenly now it's out there if you're curious enough. And when things don't go wrong or do, don't go as we expect them, we get very, very curious. Like, what the yeah. heck is happening here? And then you read, and then you're like, huh. Yeah. Maybe we can optimize this. Shouldn't have put that <laughs> colon there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so anything that you want our audience to know, like where to go next if they want to learn about how to like how to partner with you to create the best platform? Yeah. Um, well, first off, uh, I'll be at KubeCon in New Amsterdam. So if you're going there, feel free to come by the, um, the Google booth. And we have plenty of folks out there that can talk about our products that can help you build a platform more easily, right? Um, and then you can always reach out to me on Twitter. I think you have that that yes. access for right here. And actually, in the in the bottom of the screen, you yeah. can see like his data. I am there. So um, ping him. Yeah, <laughs> and you know we have a lot of smart folks uh, at Google that are that are willing to pitch in and help our customers figure out how to how to um, build these platforms a little bit easier, right? You don't have to build everything from scratch. No. There are providers out there that get you some percentage of the way, and so you should evaluate that you know as you're looking at how you're going to build out your platform if you're going to build one the other the last thing you don't have to build a platform if if it makes sense for you if it lines up with your requirements and your business needs then for sure it could be useful but you don't have to no. and you don't have to run kubernetes right if you have one service <laughs> you could probably find an easier way to run it so yes. i just want to you know it's not a it's not a prescription but it can help Thank you very much, Nick, for being here with us, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it.